After starting off slow this year, it seems like Carson Wentz and the Colts have found their groove, and so I hope they can keep it up. Wentz faking the handoff, going to take a shot, wide open is his man! After making his way to Indy following some underwhelming play in Philly, it seemed like going someplace new could have been what he needed all along. Many questioned whether or not Carson and his former OC, Frank Reich, would be able to create some magic once again. And although initially it seemed unlikely, their week one matchup against Seattle proved that the Colts had something in the bin, but sadly enough not to win as they lost 28-16. Even though it was a rough loss, Carson was still able to pass for over 250 yards and two touchdowns in the loss and at least start off his time in Indy pretty well. Following their week one performance, many people were skeptical about how good the team really was considering the fact that they made the playoffs the previous season. Keep in mind that last season the Colts barely lost to the Bills in the playoffs with Phillip under center. So many thought if he could do that, it would only make sense that Carson could do his thing on a very similar Colts unit. Although he was very talented, after missing most of training camp because of a left foot injury and then being put on the COVID list before the opener, the odds were stacked against him going into the season. Well, it seemed like those odds would keep stacking up as he sprained both ankles week 4 against LA. Even then, they still barely lost 27-24, and Carson's underwhelming play was almost enough to beat a solid Rams unit. Not only did the injury bother him against LA, but the following week against Tennessee, he was still unable to play his kind of football due to a lack of mobility. Once again, the team lost in a relatively close effort, 25-16, but Carson was just not able to establish much of a rhythm with less than 200 yards passing, a just above 50% completion percentage, and zero touchdowns. Following a string of three straight losses, there were quite a bit of doubts around the team, and especially Carson's level of play. It's easy to critique tough play from the outside looking in, but all of the behind the scenes within the situation made it an uphill battle for my man, especially against two playoff teams and a decent Seahawks squad. After going through the ringer for nearly a month, a matchup against Miami seemed like a blessing for the stud, and his over 220 yards and two touchdowns got them their first win of the year. Although beating a bad Miami team is not really anything to celebrate, it was at least a win with Carson Wentz under center and gave them a little boost going into Baltimore. A very different team from Miami, but although it was a more difficult matchup than the previous week, the Colts came to play and were up 25-9 in the fourth quarter. In what was one of the worst losses imaginable, the Colts choked the game away and lost 31-25 in OT. Sadly, the win slipped away from the team, and Carson's over 400 yards and two touchdowns were unable to stop one of the most deflating comebacks in recent memory. It seems like Carson can never catch a break, and the Baltimore game seemed to further prove how against Carson everything has seemed for the past few years. Anyways, the stud was once again given a bone against a very not good Houston unit in what seemed to be a perfect setup for a bounce back win. Well it turned out to be, and Carson's over 220 yards and two touchdowns helped the team smoke the Texans 31-3. Now that the Colts had their swagger back, Carson went into a rainy Sunday night matchup versus San Francisco with the desire to further prove that he could play. From the get-go, Carson showed that he was ready to do his thing, and although the conditions weren't the greatest, they were still able to win 30-18 and get another boost going into the following week. Things are looking up for the stud going forward, and I'm sure he's looking to prove himself more and more each and every game. Hey, by the way, if you're enjoying the video, it'd be awesome if you guys could subscribe. But anyways, back to the vid. Through 7 games, Carson has nearly 1,700 yards, 11 touchdowns, and a very key, only one interception. Compared to his 15 picks the previous year, Carson's game is looking much more fine-tuned and has kept the Colts in contention week after week. As a whole, it seems like Carson has improved all across the board from his humiliating 2020 season. As Frank has said, this is the guy I knew in Philly. He's a big play machine and he's taking care of the football. To have a former and now current head coach say these things about you is great to hear I'm sure but well worth it considering Carson's improvement since the last year. It's impressive enough to put up solid performances week after week on a brand new team, but considering the fact that two key pieces of the offense in Quinn and Nelson and T.Y. Hilton have missed practically the entire year so far, I would say he's killing it. Nonetheless, throughout the past few weeks, number 11 has helped fill the void for T.Y., and although he kept Carson's number, the two are on timing right now. 
My man Michael Pittman has put up over 500 yards and two touchdowns throughout only seven games, and never more so was his play on display than against San Francisco. Through the pouring rain, Michael had over 100 yards and a touchdown on only four catches as he was the safety valve for my man Carson. Not only has Mike took a load off of my man, but Jonathan Taylor's consistently great play has spread the offense quite a bit, with nearly 600 yards and five touchdowns of his own on the ground. Having those two weapons at its disposal has helped Carson through the injuries and seems to have made the Colts a threat every time they lace him up. As a whole, the Colts stock has trended up week after week, and I think it will continue to as T.Y. and Quinn come back, and upon that, the team is able to establish a rhythm within their game. You've seen it recently, but I think the team has what it takes to contend with some of the best of the best. Talking about great teams, the Colts are going up against a Tennessee team that is on fire after steamrolling Kansas City. Not only just that, but the team was able to edge out Buffalo the week before and stump Carson early on. I have a feeling that this game is going to prove how far the Colts have come this season and whether or not they have what it takes to take down a legitimate contender. This time around is different from back when, and as Carson would say, he's feeling much better. Last time the two went up against each other, Carson could barely move out of the pocket, and as he would say, there were many plays that he would want back now that he could actually move. Not just that, but the team has been able to mesh throughout the season and understand how to take advantage of all the talent that they have all across the offense. Whether or not T.Y. plays, the Colts are looking to take advantage of an underwhelming Tennessee secondary that has allowed nearly 300 yards per game. Taking all of this into account, the Colts are fired up going against Tennessee in what could be a massive game for their playoff hopes. Since Indy lost the first matchup, if they lose this one, then they could be in trouble. With that in mind, I think they are going to show out at home and beat the Titans in a close-knit effort. I know it's a bit of a stretch, but I'm liking what I've seen out of Carson and the Colts as a whole, and I think they have what it takes to do their thing once again. What do you guys think of all this? Do Carson and the Colts have what it takes to win, or do they just beat sorry squats? Comment down below your thoughts. Anyways, Carson is looking good in Indy, and I think he has what it takes to lead the team to the promised land once again. Wentz protected, end zone, it is caught! Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed, it would be awesome if you guys could subscribe, like, and comment down below your thoughts. But anyway, see you all soon. Peace out.